Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. This is episode 190 of my Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. A couple of hiccups going live today. <laughs> hi Cheryl, hi Danette, Tilly, Susan, Susan Klein. Thank you for my happy mail. I keep meaning to send you an email. Joanne, Karen, Lila, hi Amy, Sarita, welcome. Hi Wanda, hi Malayda May, Karen. Yay, happy Wednesday. Hi Susan, hi Loretta. I actually just have a 3D project for you tonight because as usual, I ran out of time. I will have a card that coordinates with that project. It'll go to my blog tomorrow. I'm gonna design one tonight. Hey, Brian King, welcome. Hi, Shirley, love it. Hi, Kathy, hi, Karen, Laura, Darlene, Enika, thank you. I don't know what was going on with the Wi-Fi tonight. Normally I've got a wired connection and it was hiccuping. Anyways, I think we're good. <laughs> Cross your fingers. We never know with a live event, do we? Thank you, thank you. All right, so a couple of housekeeping items. Let's jump into that really quickly. My host code this month is NEF7X3AX. Please use that on orders under $150 through me. If your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code because you will earn stamp and rewards on orders at that level. And my free gift this month for orders of $75 or, or more is the Tasteful Textiles 3D Embossing Folder. I could not remember the name of that last week. And if you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't ordered from me in a while, you can request current copies of our copies of our current catalogs. I can always say that better on my YouTube videos um, at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And I would be happy to put those in the mail to you. I also have opened up my product shares for the new annual catalog. You can see all the details and information about those at thepaperpixie.com slash shares. It's a great way to get um, a sampling of all the papers and ribbons or both without spending a fortune on buying them all yourself. And then I also have an in color club. This is the five new in colors. If you want to receive happy mail over a five month period of time, you can build your stash of all the new in colors. And again, all the information is at my blog, thepaperpixie.com slash in color club. I think that is all that I wanted to cover. Um, let's see, I do have some happy mail that I'm gonna do for show and tell. I don't have artwork from the kids. We did take Lily to the eye doctor this week and she's getting herself a new pair of glasses. So that was our excitement for this week. We also got our second dose of the vaccine. So yay, only what, two weeks and then <laughs> we'll feel more protected than we have. So I'm looking forward to that. So let me flip the camera, get my picture in picture. I believe I have fixed the color, although let's see. It looks green again. <laughs> that is Bermuda Bay. Anyways, let me show you some quick happy mail. Look at this beautiful card. This is a new set of dies. Um, and this was from my team member, Linda. I love these new dies. It's the color and contour bundle, I think is the name of it, but the dies are to die for, no pun intended. And then this beautiful card from Jeannie Quelo on my team. Thank you, I love this paper. This is not Stampin' Up! paper. Brian's looking at, my husband is over here watching for your questions. Um, he's looking to see if the color compares. This one's closer. <laughs> and then look at this gorgeous ensemble of products from my team member Dimples. Again, this is the color and contour bundle. Now that looks right. It just doesn't seem to like Bermuda Bay. No. But it's this awesome folder. She's got all kinds of tags and three by three cards and sentiment. I mean, look at this. This this uh, features all of the in colors. Look, I got little bookmarks, little pinwheel bookmarks. I love this. So Dimples, thank you for this awesome Happy Mail. Now, <laughs> I spent more time getting the, as I get the cord in the way, more time getting the templates ready for tonight. So I haven't actually cut the cardstock for the project. I will do that live. But are you ready for it? The snail mail suite. Of course, 
I need to go get my measurements because I left them on my desk, but I'm also going to grab the catalog. So one moment. Okay, so let me show you this first as a teaser. This is the Snail Mail Suite, okay? This is a really adorable suite. I actually haven't played with it, believe it or not. This is my first time playing with it. But in the suite, we've got awesome paper, a stamp set and dies. There's just some really cute stuff. I'm actually gonna be using a different ribbon, but um, it comes with the Snail Mail Twine Combo Pack if you purchase the whole suite and then these resin hearts. But look at these adorable little envelopes. So let me share with you my project tonight. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so this is an explosion box. I don't think I've done an explosion box yet, but I love Amazon and well, first of all, I, um, I glued my little snail into the envelope here on the lid. Now this is real red, even though it's looking like lovely lipstick to me on the screen. Um, and I even studied how to get the white balance right. Anyways, you could not glue the snail in and just have him come in and out of the envelope, but watch what happens. You guys ready? I'm gonna zoom in here. What page? Oh, it is on page 55 of the mini catalog. All right, you ready? Let's see if I can do this. So you get the full effect. <gasps> okay, here's the explosion box. It says you snailed it. But you guys, this is a mushroom pen. <laughs> I found it on Amazon. Um, I want to give credit to, I think, Marissa Alvarez. She has a tutorial where she had these pens. I'm like, I've got to get my hands on those pens. The funny thing is, I think that these pens are so popular, they're hard to find. So let me, I'm going to zoom back out because I want to show you what I found. And I will link to this. I'll add it to the description after this live. And then I, you know I will link to it in my project tutorial, but hold on. This is gonna be huge in the camera. I got a box of, it says 28 pieces, but this for Valentine's Day, it was $15 on Amazon. So I'm gonna have to come up with all kinds of projects for these. But let me show you, this is kind of what they come in and you could save these hearts and fill them with candy for another project. I may have to come up with a box for those, but it was the only way I could get my hands on these mushroom pens. So let me show you how they work. They're so cute, they're like telescoping pens. Look at that and how cute is that for the snail mail suite? I was dying. <laughs> so that's what we're creating an explosion box for. Again, this box would be really cute. I've seen some cute explosion boxes with um, Reese's peanut butter eggs, um, you know, the foil wrapped chocolate eggs for Easter. But this is my version of it. And I tweaked the measurement so that we wouldn't have any problems with the lid fitting over the base. So there are some 16th inch measurements, but I'm trying to stick to just the cardstock size for that. So this, hopefully you won't be able to wait to give this a try. So tomorrow's blog post will be a card using the snail mail suite, assuming I don't lose my mojo between now and tomorrow morning. And then this project will post with a shortened YouTube tutorial on Friday with pictures of all the templates and all that good stuff. So we're just gonna spend time putting this together. If you have any questions, ask away. Brian is watching for your questions and he'll pop those up on the screen. And let's get started. So again, like I said, I have not cut any of the cardstock yet because we had a delicious dinner instead. <laughs> How's that? All right. So starting with Bermuda Bay cardstock, we are gonna cut that, the lid with Bermuda Bay, which of course looks totally green to me on the screen, but it's a beautiful turquoise blue, five and three quarters by five and three quarters. You're gonna cut a square. We're gonna do all the cutting while we've got this out. So this is for the lid, five and three quarters by five and three quarters. An EOS lip balm probably would fit because this is um, one and three quarters inches wide. So I think, I can't remember the dimensions of an EOS lip balm, but I'm 
pretty sure that it will fit. So Daffodil Delight, this is looking weird on the screen as well. This one we're gonna cut to six and 11 sixteenths, which is one sixteenth less than six and three quarters. So just come up to six and three quarters and then bring it back a tick mark, okay? Six and 11 sixteenths by six and 11 sixteenths, okay? Again, one tick mark before six and three quarters. And you guys, I flipped my cutting blade and scoring blade. So hopefully the pens, I got them on Amazon, Marcy. And I will link to exactly the box that I purchased. It was like $14.99. I think you get, it says 28 pieces. I think it's technically 24. Half are mushroom pens and the other half are bowling pins. So it's a totally random box. But right now I think it's the only way you can get your hands on those mushroom pens. And you really can't beat the price for how many you get. All right, so Daffodil Delight. Again, 6 and 11 sixteenths by 6 and 11 sixteenths. Let's bring in the mushroom paper, which I'm doing on the outside of the box. And this we're gonna, I'm gonna cut a strip to one and five eighths. Okay, so just do a strip. And I've got the paper um, orientation in portrait. So the pattern is in portrait, one and five eighths. And then we're gonna cut four pieces to one and seven eighths. So you're gonna have pieces that are one and five eighths by one and seven eighths. And you want them in portrait. I'm gonna cut four of those. I can hear my fan, or is that your fan? It's yours, okay. <laughs> oh. And then, so we got four pieces, one and five eighths by one and seven eighths. And then I'm gonna cut a square, so one and five eighths by one and five eighths. I will repeat those. Four pieces in portrait, one and five eighths by one and seven eighths. One piece that is square, one and five eighths by one and five eighths. So we've got that for the outside. Then this adorable pattern. I think I'm most obsessed with the paper because it's so darn cute. This is gonna be for the inside explosion part of the box. And this DSP or designer series paper, we're gonna to cut to one and nine sixteenths. Now remember, because we had to do 16th inch measurements on the Daffodil Delight, one and nine sixteenths is one tick mark past one and a half. So cut a strip to one and nine sixteenths. These are also gonna be in portrait, so I've got my pattern going up and down. And then these we're going to cut to two and three eighths. And we're gonna need four pieces of that. So two and three eighths. Normally, if you're new to my live, I would have had all of this cut already. <laughs> Ooh. Such is life. All right, two and three eighths. Two and three eighths. And then the last thing we need to cut is our real red piece. That is gonna be for the base of the box. And that one, I need that, I need a different size, but thank you. I'll probably use that to die cut. Um, one and five eighths by four and a half. So let's cut to four and a half. And then one and five eighths. There we go. Okay, so one and five eighths, four and a half. That is all the cutting. Yay, I just didn't have time to do that before. All right, so now let's start with the Bermuda Bay piece. And I am bringing in my Simply Scored, which does not have the stylus on it at the moment. So. Silly me, I'm gonna add the stylus to my take your pick tool. All right, so this is Bermuda Bay. Again, this was five and three quarters by five and three quarters. We're gonna score this at two inches on all four sides. So that's the easy part. So just go two and just keep rotating a quarter of a turn until you've scored all the way around. So that's Bermuda Bay. 
Daffodil Delight. We're going to score at two and a half on all four sides. So two and a half. Just work your way around. Dinner was um, beef. What would you call it? You marinated it in, in the slow cooker. It was beef, shredded beef tacos, but Mr. Pixie over here comes up with his own sauce for it and it's delicious. And it had marinated cucumbers and carrots on the top and homemade ranch dressing. So the yellow piece I'll repeat is six and 11 sixteenths by six and 11 sixteenths. We've scored it on all four sides at two and a half. Then on this tiny little piece, we're gonna score this at one and five eighths, two, three and five eighths, and four. I have templates for all of these, so I will show you that when we switch to each one. No clue where my style is. Oh, I found it after I needed it. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow too. My hair is driving me bonkers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, let's start with Bermuda Bay. This is our lid. I'm going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. Make sure I pick the right template. All right, so here's the template. Since this is square, you just start wherever you want, but I'm going to, let's turn it this way. <laughs> I'm going to cut up each of the vertical score lines and stop at the horizontal score line. So both of these on the same side, I am just cutting right down the middle of the score line. So I've cut up each of those vertical score lines, stopped at the horizontal. I'm going to turn it 180 and repeat the same thing. Like so. Now, we're going to be trimming away because the, and you can hand trim this as well. You can just eyeball it. I'm actually going to bring in the paper trimmer because it goes really fast. So bring in the paper trimmer. These pieces that we cut away, we want to keep. So I'm going to fold that out of the way, that middle section. And I'm going to line up, whoops, line up this folded edge. It's, that's just the easiest for me to see at the second vertical line from the cut line. That's basically the half inch mark, or you can just have your edge go to the edge of the um, paper trimmer. I get, I get inspiration from Pinterest and... I always have projects in my mind that I've seen. I'm like, ooh, I want to come up with my own version of that. So um, oftentimes it's, I either figure it out in my head or I've seen um, other demonstrators that have created them. Or even um, box making companies, they also give me ideas as well. So that is really just removing the bulk. And then what we're left with on this side is then these half inch sections. So I'm going to turn it 180, again, folding that middle section out of the way lining up that fold at the second line here, which is the half inch mark, or this edge right here at the end of the cutting mat, which is inch and a half, and then remove that bulk. So now our piece is starting to look like the template there. We're now just gonna come in and miter cut on these little half inch sections. I do like to just fold stuff out of the way Do the same thing over on this side, fold that out of the way. All right, so that is good to go. Before we put it together, we're gonna go ahead and glue down our designer series paper. That's gonna be the pink pattern that was shorter. So we've got just to show you the difference. We've got these longer pieces. These are gonna be on the Daffodil Delight. These shorter pieces, so we've got four this size and one this size. I'll repeat these again. One and five eighths by one and seven eighths. Four pieces, you wanna cut them in portrait if you've got a directional pattern. 
and one piece that's one and five eight by one and five eighths. And I'm gonna have this be the front of our box just because this is how it's gonna glue together. So I'm keeping that in mind because it's really just this piece that matters. We want to make sure that that's going in the right direction. So I'm bringing in liquid glue and we'll glue this stuff down. It's always a good time to ask questions when I'm gluing because I'm usually quieter. <laughs> it's relaxing for me. So that'll just go in the center. And easier to put the paper on now than after you put the box together. I'll have to see if I have an EOS lip balm that I can try. The only thing you might want to change is the circle die that you use for the interior. That's the only thing I can think of. I just can't remember the diameter of those. I love the color scheme of this designer series paper. I'm going to put Brian to sleep over here, gluing my paper. <laughs> Maybe I'm putting you guys to sleep. This is so relaxing. So we learned that Lily is colorblind this week, which we had no idea because she's such an artist. <laughs> so, um, but she picked out some really cute glasses that kind of look like artist glasses because they're pink, but they've got all these different flecks of color. Really cute. And she sure was excited about <laughs> glasses. I remember feeling that way. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do on these short tabs, you could use tear and tape for this. I'm gonna just use liquid glue because I'm using it for other parts of the project. But I'm gonna put glue along one tab at a time and I'm gonna line up this cut edge with that fold line to square up the sides of the box. The liquid glue actually is my preference because it allows you to kind of just slide things right into place and square up that corner. And then just work your way around. I'm lightly squeezing my glue. So it looks like I'm putting a lot of glue on but it's a really light layer. We'll put together our little decoration for the top last. But again, use your adhesive of preference here. This part is always the, la the hardest one to get in, the last tab. You just kind of kind of pull stuff out of the way to get that just past there. As long as you're gentle, you'll be fine. All right, so there is the lid. Cute, right? Cute just like it is, although it's kind of an upside down box. <laughs> All right, let's switch to the Daffodil Delight piece. Very similar. We're going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. And bring in that template. This one we're simply just going to cut away the four corners and you can save those Daffodil Delight pieces for another project. I'm just going to cut right up the score line, all of these vertical score lines, stopping at the horizontal score line. And I'll just keep turning a quarter turn. And as you go, those corners will fall off. I know big scissors would probably work better on this. I'm just so used to having my paper snips. They're my go-to. All right. There's that piece. You can save those Daffodil Delight pieces because they're good sized pieces. They're two and a half inches square, so great for die cuts. And then all we need to do is round the corners of this. 
using the trusty detailed trio punch. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Just have to kind of work your way around. So my scraps, good question, Ava. I, um, all of my, uh, Cardstock has this uh, paper sleeve from Stampin' Storage and I just chuck the scraps right in the paper sleeve and I go to these first usually unless I'm creating starting with a card base. It's also where I label my cardstock as well so I know which color is which. So there's that. Now, while we have the detailed trio punch out, these four pieces, um, we want to round the top corners. So that will coordinate with our explosion box. I forgot I have one more piece of paper. I need to cut the white, basic white. We'll do that in a minute. All right, so simple template there, but that will be on my blog. Now we can come in and we're gonna glue these to the inside of this for our explosion portion of the box. <laughs> you can say, <laughs> Lily forgets that we're alive, so she always says, love you. Love you, mommy, night night, after she's finished her book. <laughs> She'll probably keep saying it. So yeah, this is gonna uh, coordinate with that rounded corner. Something different. You certainly don't have to round the corners. You could keep them square. But the designer series paper really adds a lot to this project. It's just like surprise after surprise and Sort of an unexpected pattern. I love the snails and the mushrooms. All right, and the last piece. All right, now put that off to the side. So it's basically gonna fold up like so, and I'll show you that again when we've got it together. We've got our real red piece, and I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. Curious how many of you that are watching got snow. I've seen so many pictures of snow, which is crazy. Um, we had a temperature drop, but we did not have snow, so <laughs> crazy, crazy weather. So this is a really simple template here just to show you that um, I've got sort of the one and five eighths inch square here on the left, the little half inch section on the side, and we're going to die cut a circle here. But before I forget, I'm just going to come in and notch on that little half inch section. But I'm going to use the stamp and cut and emboss machine and you can use the mini for this as well. It's a teeny tiny circle die that we're using. It's from the layering circles and this is the smallest circle. Let me double check that. Yes, it is the smallest circle, which is about one and eight inches in diameter. Okay, so let me bring in, I should have brought the mini out for this, but we'll go with what we have. I am going to bring in a post-it note because I want to center that circle again, showing you the orientation here. We've got it in this square, not the one that's on the far left, but this one in the sort of middle. So I'm just going to center that in the square. You've got about an eighth of an inch on either side of it, and I'll just hold that in place with post-it note 
And where's my other cutting thing? <laughs> I'm like, is it, did I put it over by you? Probably not. The other cutting. Let's do a new one. Oh, it's right underneath your laptop. <laughs> Turn the pan off. <laughs> Brian was using it to uh, cool his laptop. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so we'll run that through. I'm going to bring the die cutting machine back in a minute, but let's get the box, the basics of the box put together. So now we've got that little circle that our mushroom pen is going to sit in. So cute. All right, bring that back in a second. I'm going to save this piece because we're going to cut a little heart out. So maximize. All right, so I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to fold on the second score line from the left and put liquid glue, or you could use tear and tape, on that side tab. And then I'm going to fold on the first score line from the right. That's just going to square that up. There's a number of different ways we could have done this box, but I want it to be fairly simple and just to do the job, right? So it's going to sit in our box like so. We just want to pay attention. Um, I kind of like it better where you've got the edge, the front edge, actually let me flip it this way. <laughs> we'll have this be the front of our box here. I mean, you could look at it from this side, but I think it looks nicer if you've got that flat edge there. And then I'm just gonna put liquid glue on the back side of this, the one that doesn't have the circle cut out. And we're gonna center this. It's just enough to fit inside that base. I'm just looking around. Now you can lay this flat if you want to, to press things into place. Gives you a little bit of leverage. Just kind of flip flop back and forth. There we go. So that is going to be what we set our mushroom pen in. But how cute is that? I love the red contrast with the Bermuda Bay and the Daffodil Delight. Just such fun color combination. All right. So what I'm going to do now is cut a strip of basic white to one and, what did I do? One and three quarters, I think. Let's see. One inch. <laughs> I was going to cut it way too big. All right, so one inch strip of basic white. One inch by, you think I would measure and write that measurement down. One inch by one and nine sixteenths. So the same width as the designer series paper. Um, good question. So Sarah Douglas explained a little bit on um, one of her lives that, for example, the circle punches that are retiring, I think they're going to come back eventually. She explained that circle punches oftentimes have this cyclical um, sales period. So, you know, they, they see that sales go down because everybody has the circle punches and then they'll retire them for, for a little while. And then she says that they're going to come back. Um, there's still a need for punches. If you ask me, I love our dies, but punches are where it's at for me because I don't have a lot of time to create and punches are just so much faster. So no, not necessarily that they're going towards more dies. It's just um, some of the dies, obviously it typically is based on sales if they retire them or not. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, so real red ink. And I didn't even show you this bundle, did I? Dies. Here is the cute stamp set. I know I showed it to you in the catalog, but I love the sentiment you snailed it. So we're going to stamp that on that one inch by one and nine sixteenths strip of basic white. And this should fit just inside. I need to re-ink my real red. All right, so we determined that this was going to be the front, so I'm going to glue this down to this panel. This box went through a few different iterations, and Brian 
gave me feedback every step of the way. I went real crazy for a second and then had to dial it back. <laughs> Ooh, it's hard to, um, to not use all of the things. <laughs> all right, so that's the inside. Now we've got our adorable mushroom pen. It does have a flat bottom to sit in the base, but I did find that I wanted to give it a little bit more stability. So I'm just gonna grab a glue dot and stick that to the bottom. The glue dot, obviously it may tear the cardstock slightly when the recipient receives this. Really easy to pull off a of plastic, but I'm just gonna use that to keep that in place. And then all you need is one glue dot, but it just sits in there. I love how it nestles in there. So cute. So we made this lid that is just slightly bigger than the base. So that will fit right over the top. And if you really want to get a great sort of explosion effect, you can kind of move these panels backwards and forwards to break up the fibers a little bit so that it will lay flat. Again, you just fold it up, put the box over. Look at that. Now let's see if it works. Yay! Oh, I could do that over and over again. The kids were doing it <laughs> before when I was showing them the box. All right, so now let's have a little bit of fun creating our little snail mail envelope using the, what are the, what are the dies called? The snail, wait, snail dies. <laughs> oh goodness, I'm delirious tonight. Okay, let's see if I can remember everything I did here. So we're gonna start with a scrap piece of real red. I just grabbed whatever was in my little scrap folder and we'll cut out, and I can actually do a few things here. So let's do the envelope. I've got my little cutout, the one and one eighth circle punch. We'll cut a little heart. And what am I missing? Oh, the snail. So one of the patterns in the paper is this one, and the snail die, the one um, that fits with the uh, envelope on the shell, you can cut that out. So I just take a pair of paper snips and just kind of snip out one. You can get a lot of them out of this one sheet and you get two sheets of it in the pack. So there's that guy, I've isolated him. And then this die will perfectly cut him out. Now he is also in the stamp set. So you can stamp, it's gonna have the you've got male sentiment, but you can still die cut the snail. If you wanted to change his colors or use your Stampin' Blends or do something paper piecing or something fun. So I love that you have options with this. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've got my, I'm gonna get a different post-it note. Just lining that up, put the post-it note so that doesn't slide on me. The other ones are fine if they slip and slide a little bit. And we'll run that all through. I think that's everything. I'm looking at my sample. <laughs> the heart, the envelope. Yes, the heart die is included. You actually get two of them. My other one is hiding somewhere under a pile of paper. But yeah, you get two hearts. Let's look at that right there. Two hearts that come with that. So you get two mushrooms, two hearts. You get a larger mushroom, lots of cute. I think you can see on this image the stuff that's a little bit off white. Those are all the things that can cut out with the dies. And this is the um, postage stamp punch that works with that as well. All right, just tidying up my mess here. So we've got, where did my heart go? Oh, thank you. See, that's why you're here. All right, so, and this is kind of cute too. If I had centered the heart, that would be a cute element as well. All right, on the, what I've noticed on the envelope dies, I don't know if I can illustrate this. Can you see the score lines? The one at the bottom is just in line with the intersection of the sides. But the one on the top is up a little bit higher. It's a very subtle difference, 
but I believe that's because this is the top of the envelope that you leave open and this is the bottom. I, that's my official opinion. <laughs> I have no idea if that's the case. So I flip this over. Now that die scores and makes the most adorable mini envelope. So I'm gonna come in and burnish. I'm just doing the two sides and the bottom. So we're gonna fold the sides in and the bottom and then we've got this super cute envelope. So there's very little that overlaps on this. So I'm just gonna use little dabs of liquid glue I'm getting to the end of my glue bottle here like teeny little dot right there because I don't want glue going where I don't want it to go I'll just hold those together and then I just put the thinnest little bead right up to that stitching just a little bit you could even just do a little dot here at the point and fold that up And then I'll just come in and burnish a bit, make sure that that's good and crisp and adhered. And then we've got our cute little envelope pocket that we can put our snail into. Oh, so cute. All right, so I'm gonna grab a glue dot for this little heart. I know he's already got a heart on his Happy Mail, but let's add another heart to him. Let's put that off to the lower right there because that's just too cute. And then one more thing, I've got the Daffodil Delight, is this the ruched? Yes, quarter inch ruched ribbon. It coordinates with this suite because it's got the Daffodil Delight color, but you could also use the Snail Mail Twine Combo Pack. I'm just gonna do a little bunny ears bow. So two loop-de-loops. Ileana, let me check on your order because they were back ordered for a little bit, so it's possible they're now on the way to you. I know that those were back ordered, I think, until last week, but I will check and get right back to you. Good question. And if not, we'll make it right and send you some, okay? All right, so I'm just making a little bow here. Trimming the ends. I'm having fun with this project. It's more than I would normally do for a project, but it was too cute to play with these snails. All right, so let's bring in our box here. I'm gonna kind of put this at a bit of an angle. Grabbing a trio of dimensionals. Like so. I'm just kind of lay that on a bit of an angle. Then let's grab our little snail. I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue. Well, before I do that, if you wanted, you could just put him in there and the recipient can take him in and out of the envelope. Super cute, okay? But if you wanted him to be stationary, I'm just putting a little bit of liquid glue on the back. I'm gonna slide it in on a bit of an angle because I do want some of that heart peeking out because I'm then going to put a little rhinestone. Let's do a medium-sized rhinestone right on that heart for a little bit of bling. And then, <laughs> as I'm throwing stuff around, I'm going to pick up a glue dot on the back of the Daffodil Delight knot. And then we'll pop that sort of off to the side here. Just kind of a cute little vignette on the lid of this so that project is finished i know you all are waiting for prize patrol but let me just show you that one more time boom is that the one wait which one do we just do <laughs> it has a tendency to try to stay open but it will fold back down if you break those fibers either way it's so cute now the mushroom pens come in multiple colors i don't think you get a choice you get i think it's purple maybe blue red i focused on the red ones because I thought those were just too cute for this explosion box but love it and again I think you can fit like somebody asked an EOS lip balm most likely will fit in here um chocolate eggs will fit in here I'm sure you guys are going to come up with all kinds of fun things that will fit and I hope that you will share your projects with me you can always email me pictures at the paper at julie at the paper um or you can post them on social media with the hashtag Paper Pixie, and I always check those out. So that is tonight's project. Let's jump into Prize Patrol. Um, we have an unclaimed Prize Patrol from 
I guess technically three weeks ago, the Facebook Live from before um, I went, I took spring break. I didn't go anywhere, but since I took the week off for spring break, so I picked a new winner for that. So this is from episode one, let's see, 188, I believe. <laughs> so let me get to prize patrol. This is for those that win. So congratulations to Jane Franklin. I believe she lives here in Georgia. So Jane, if you're watching, claim your prize patrol at thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. You're getting these uh, note cards and envelopes and the ladybug trinkets plus a handmade card from my stash. Winners from last week's Facebook Live, episode 189. Congratulations to Anita Davis Llewellyn and Delia Barnes. Delia is on my team. So if both of you will also claim your prize patrol at thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. I'll get those in the mail too, along with a handmade card from my stash. And drum roll tonight's prize patrol. Let me, before I put it, well, I will put it down before you decide. Let's see. <laughs> um, I am giving away, this was the paper pumpkin add-on with the little treat boxes. This coordinates with the snail mail suite, plus a pack of the snail mail baker's twine. So two lucky winners, um, US residents only. I just ship within the US. If you're watching on YouTube, you want to put hashtag prize patrol in the comments of the video, not in the live chat, because I can't pull those comments from the live chat. So leave it in the comments of the video and then <laughs> chain hashtag enabler. <laughs> so it's too cute. Um, but and then Facebook, you know the drill. Just leave hashtag prize patrol. Make sure you're spelling it right. No spaces. Add the hashtag. That's the what I need to be able to um, enter you for a chance to win. I will choose winners next Wednesday and share the winners on next week's Facebook or next week's live broadcast. So this is eligible to both um, live watchers as well as replay watchers between now and when I choose winners next Wednesday. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Oops, hold on. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I meant to click this button as I fade to black. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed this project and I really hope that you give it a try. So feel free to share pictures with me of your project Julie at thepaperpixie.com. You can text them to me as well. Um, you can also uh, share it on social media with the hashtag, uh, hashtag paper pixie, not to be confused with hashtag price patrol. And I'll check those out. Thank you so much for joining me. I will, the card, I'll post a snail mail card tomorrow on the blog, thepaperpixie.com. This project and all the details will post on Friday's blog post. If you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive emails each time I publish a new blog post. You can do that at thepaperpixie.com slash subscribe, and you'll get an email as soon as I post. Um, and then I will be live next Wednesday for episode 191 at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks, everybody. Take good care. Be well. Stay safe. Bye.